Hello, I'm missionary evangelist Tony Abram, and we're going to share something from Brazil today, a mission story. Uh, let's put the characters in there. There's a garbage of Global Vision. There's my wife, Marge Abram, and myself. We're just leaving one city on the coast of Brazil where we had thousands of people attending. The food was good. Of a, a lovely buffet for very reasonable prices at that time for two dollars, and they love to eat meat. And if you're a meat eater, wow, there's a place to go. Anyways, we're on the trip. The first part of the pip trip on the bus was not bad, it was because we were going to Mundo Novo, Novo Mundo in Spanish, Mundo Novo in Brazilian. Portuguese, and it means a new world, and we we're kind of excited, but then we change buses, and then the road is no longer uh, paved, it's dust and dirt, and we cover our faces like with masks, like if they were masks, to cut down on the dust, and finally we think we're getting there, and we all get off the bus, and then we all get on a, can well, I call it a canoe, more like a dory, it not a, it's not a ferry, and we have to cross the river, and we finally arrive in Mundo Novo, the new world, and Marge says, oh, I like the old world better. Walter says, I, I like the new world, but not this new world. But anyways, it was a town of 10,000 people, and uh, there's several experiences I'd like to tell you about it. I'd like to tell you about the Hotel Presidente. No, it was called, uh, uh, it was named after one of our president. Oh, Hotel uh, John Kennedy. And uh, we were President John Kennedy Hotel. And we were staying there. It cost us $2 a night. And uh, the biggest problem was the, the cockroaches. And I'd like to tell that story, but it takes a little bit too long because we don't want to take too much time on this experience. But I want to tell you some of the uh, good things that happened. A lot of good things actually happened there. But uh, paved roads. But the whole town of 10,000 was covered with a PA system. And during the day, they had music and news on it and so forth. And in our crusade at night, an open-air crusade, we were able to tie into it. And so that people, if they didn't come to the crusade, they could hear it. And uh, they even cut the wires a few times during the two-week crusade that we were there. And, uh, but crowds grew because God was saving and healing people. There was one uh, evangelical church there, Assembly of God Church, uh, and they, they sponsored us. And of course, they, they had their hands full, and they put up the platform and, and the lighting and so forth, and the crowds grew, maybe one or 2,000 the first night, spectators. Then God started to move, and our crowds grew to no less than 8,000 people in a town of 10,000. Uh, that, that is wonderful. And it was during the Easter time, and I think it was when the Catholic Church had a ceremony where they were carrying a statue of Jesus to the cemetery on Friday, Good Friday, and then they and then they would uh, bring him back to the church on on Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning. And uh, anyways, here we are preaching, and testimonies are coming across, and it was kind of uh, well humorous in a way. Uh, the people were saying, here, you carry the statue, you get, because it was a big, big one, and they were on their, the whole carrying it on their shoulders, uh, like with these long poles, and uh, I'm going over there, I'm going over there, and almost everyone eventually that was in the parade to the cemetery ended up in our crusade. Well, God blessed during that time. Uh, I forget how many hundreds of people were baptized in water, uh, people received Jesus as their personal Savior. Uh, people repented. And 
wonderful miracles of divine healing took place. It seems wherever there's revival, there are other manifestations like divine healing. Now, you may not believe that God can heal today, but he does answer prayer. And I remember one woman on the platform, and she was standing there, and uh, an, I'd say a woman about 50 years old, and she's looking up at the dark sky, and she's saying, uh, Formosa, Formosa. That's uh, in Spanish, it's Hermoso with H, but in, in Portuguese, it's Formoso. Uh, that's how they... They named uh, Formosa Taiwan in the beginning when it used to be called Formosa when the when the Portuguese came and saw the beautiful island of uh, there and they of Taiwan and they just said Formosa Formosa and it became the name of the 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 island for many many years and uh, now we know it of course is Taiwan Republic of China. Anyways, here. Here, this woman, she's looking up at the sky, and she's saying, Formosa, Formosa. And the reason she was saying the stars, the moon, was beautiful, because for over 20 years, her eyes were blind. But now she could see. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It wasn't very easy. No air conditioning. Very hot. We're just, we were in the in the state of Monte Grosso, which is just south of the Amazon. And it was hot and sticky and roaches. And I don't think Brother Walder will mind if I just tell this one quick mission story, uh, kind of a PS on it, because we were sitting there drinking Pepsi Cola. We had always watched that the, the roaches wouldn't get into our Pepsi before we could drink it. And <laughs> or or flies, lots of flies. I said I, I should really say more flies would get into our drink before we could. Uh, we we just keep our hand on top of the bottle. Anyways, uh, Walter was saying, you know, one thing, Tony, I have to say that my feet that they used to be kind of dry. I don't have any dry skin on them anymore. And I said, well, you know why, Walter? He said, why? I said, when you're sleeping at night, the roaches they they crawl up and they clean your feet. No, no. I said, yes. And so that night, and he was sleeping right above the kitchen, and uh, that night, I guess in the middle of the night, he flipped the light on, and he saw the room just full of these big roaches, and uh, I guess he woke at 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever time it was, he woke up the manager and had him come in and spray that room. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, you may not know this. I know that when we've been on the mission fields for like six months at a time in some of these countries where there are uh, very big roaches, that you don't ever have to clip your fingernails and nor, nor your toenails. Now, you may not believe it, but uh, you wake up at night sometimes, you there, there they are trimming for you because they like that dry skin. Well, those are just some of the things that missionaries had to go through and some in some parts of the world still going through it. But it's worth it all when you are able to point people to Jesus, just like in that crusade. Can you imagine uh, a, a little town of 10,000, the whole town, because there was no near radio stations, was covered by a PA system where we were able to preach though the whole city could hear, but coming to the crusade about 8,000 nightly and seeing their lives changed by the power of God. And where was that? That was in Mundo Novo, Brazil. And praise God, he can do it here. He can do it for you. We could see revival and we should be seeing revival at this time. The, the the planet is going through a terrible, what what could we call it? Pandemic, yes. But there's something else. And we know where it comes from. It comes from the devil himself. Because of Jesus in John 10, 10, the devil comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus said, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So can I pray for you? If you have a need today, whether it's spiritual or physical, 
especially if you need to surrender your life to the Lord. If you need to repent and say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart and life. I know the world curses that name, but that name is the name that will bring you salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that's watching on Facebook or on YouTube, Lord, I, or any other means. I pray that you will help them. If, there's, if they've got a need spiritually, I ask that you would just come in. For that's the greatest miracle when a person receives you as personal Savior. They call on your name. Those that may be sick, Lord, we send the word of healing. You said to agree, it would be done. We ask that you heal. And Lord, we come against that, that curse. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you protect your people. But Lord, those that may have it, we just pray that that virus would die. In and that healing will take place. Now bless your people everywhere. Thank you, Lord. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit with you. And uh, we don't try to lift ourselves up. We try to lift up the Lord Jesus for all honor and glory. When I worked or worked on the platform, sang in the choir of Catherine Coleman many years ago, um, one thing I learned, if I didn't learn anything else, she says, always give the honor, glory, and praise to God. Amen. Remember, you can go to our website, TonyAbram.com. Very easy to find. A lot of links, a lot of good places. And Tom McLaughlin from, from uh, mm -hmm. Calgary, Alberta, he's a good guy that keeps all them links and things going. God bless you. We love you. Remember, a God loves